Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath to you. So glad you've joined us in church today, and also for those who are watching online. A very warm welcome to you. Let's, let's pray before we start. Dear Lord, I pray that as I share with the children that you would, you would guide and bless us and help us to be helpful to them. In Jesus' name, amen. What is this? Okay, let's confirm. You are right. Okay, it's a pair of binoculars. Okay. What do you do with binoculars? Okay, see things closer. Excellent. So it might be far away, but you can see it. It, looks, it brings it closer. It magnifies it. It zooms in on it. Okay. Um, how many of you have used binoculars before? Okay, what were you looking at? Okay, birds. What were you looking at? Cows, good. So, you know, if you're driving also in like a game reserve, it's very helpful to have these because sometimes the animals are far away or the birds are up in the tree. But if you can look through the binoculars, you can see them up close and it makes it much easier. You can really see what's happening. Now, I want to see something here quickly. Just hang on. Okay, good. I need a volunteer. Okay. So, you see there on the back of the church, on the gallery there, you see there's pieces of paper there. Can you read, can you tell me what is the, in the middle that, that's the biggest writing. Can you read it for me? You can, you can see it? Okay, you can't see it, so it's a bit far, but maybe try. You might have to just adjust it so you can see on the top here. Maybe adjust it according to your eyes. Is it still fuzzy? Can you see what that middle one says? Yes, excellent, thank you. Jesus is the Savior. But now it seems far away, you can't see it from here, but if you look through this, it will tell you, you can see clearly, you can see it, Jesus is the Savior. Okay, so I want to read two verses. Would someone mind reading them for us? You can use my Bible here. Or maybe you know this one, John 3 verse 16. Can someone recite that for us? You feeling shy today? Okay, let me read it to you. So there's two verses I want to share with you. John 3, verse 16, and I'll read it here in the New King James Version. It says, For God so loved the world that he did what? Yes, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life or eternal life. Excellent. I want to read one more verse. 1 John 4, verse 14. Does anyone know what 1 John 4, verse 14 says? Okay. It says something, the same thing, just in different words. 1 John 4, verse 14 says, And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Okay. So do you know that Jesus is the Savior of the world? And what a privilege to know that. So my lesson today is we need to be like binoculars. Because some people don't know that or they don't have the right understanding of God. They, they don't know that God loves them or that Jesus is their Savior. But if we like the binoculars, maybe that to them God seems far away. But if we can be like these binoculars so that they can see through our interaction with them, we can help them see Jesus clearly and understand that he loves them and he died to save them. So we can magnify Christ. We can help people to see Jesus more clearly and that people can accept him as their savior. So will you remember that lesson? So next time you use a pair of binoculars, please remember that lesson as well. Could I ask one of you to pray for us? 
Okay, let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for the blessing of knowing you as our Savior. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to share the good news with others, to help them see that you also love them and that you have eternal life for them too. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray before we go into the sermon. Dear Lord, we thank you that we can read your word together. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would give us understanding, that you'd help us to see you more clearly and also to apply the truth of your word to our lives. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So recently, things have been been very, very busy on my side. Um, I think balancing the pressures of ministry, there's been some urgent things that require attention, some challenging things, and also being a new dad with a new baby that has also added much happiness and also extra work at home. <laughs> so things have been very, very busy. And in the midst of all the busyness of life, sometimes one can get distracted or you get into survival mode just to, to cope. And you can forget what life is really all about. Sometimes we can forget what is the real purpose of life, especially as Christians. Now, I imagine that I'm not the only one that also faces this challenge of sometimes forgetting what is the, the purpose of life or what is life really all about. Sometimes we can get so busy with what we're doing that we can, can get distracted. So in today's message, which is entitled To Live is Christ, I want to share with you from the experience of Paul, the apostle. Paul faced many challenges in his own experience, as you read it in the book of Acts and elsewhere in the New Testament. He was also, I believe, busy. And how I want us to look at how he was able to keep his focus in life. In his focus in life as a Christian, he knew what life was all about after his conversion. And I would like us to learn from his experience today. So I'd like us to go to Philippians 1 and read from verse 19 to verse 26. So I'll have it on the screen as well, but please feel free to follow along in your own Bible as well. Philippians 1, verse 19 to 26. And I'll read it here in the New King James Version. So Paul is writing this from prison in Rome, I believe. And this is what he writes. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. So he's writing this to the Christians in Philippi. According to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I cannot tell. For I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith that your rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. So that's the portion I would like us to focus on, seeking to understand verse 21, where Paul writes, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But I want in this message to focus on that first, first part, to live is Christ. How can we make sense of Paul's statement here? So I want to go over this passage again and looking at different portions of it that relate to living for Christ or to live is Christ. 
So Paul speaks about his deliverance, for I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Well, it makes sense to me as I read it. He's writing from prison, and he desires, he believes that God will deliver him from prison, and maybe from death especially, and give him the opportunity to continue living. And we'll see why he believes it's important that God will continue granting him life. He'll clarify a little bit later. So his focused desire, his earnest desire, as he mentions here, my earnest expectation and hope. This is what Paul desires through his life. This is his expectation and hope. And what was it? That always, even now, then, at the time of, this, of writing this letter, that Christ would be magnified in his life, or through him. He says that Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. So he desired Christ to be exalted or uplifted for others to see through his life how magnificent Christ was. He desired for people to see the magnificence of Christ through his life. And he was willing to do this whether by life or even by death, if it would make others see the magnificence of Christ. Paul's desire was to magnify Christ. This is what life was about for him. And then our scripture reading, for to me, he says, this is his personal outlook, for to me, he writes, to live is Christ and to die is gain. So let's see more. What does it mean to live is Christ? We already, he already just said that he desires to magnify Christ through his life or even in his death. But then he continues and he says, if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor. If God had granted him life, if God had given him opportunity to continue living, he would use the life that God had given him to glorify Jesus, to exalt him, to magnify him, to uplift him to, before the people. That was his passion. So as long as God had granted him life, this would be what he would make his life all about. Then he says, so if I live on in the flesh, that is talking to life. Again here, to remain in the flesh. In other words, if he had to remain alive, he says, this would be more needful for the Philippians. He realized that God giving him life was not just about him. It was about serving others, being a benefit and a blessing to them, helping them. And he knew that if God had granted him life, and he believed that God would, so that he could benefit the Philippian Christians. Paul lived a life of service to others. And he says, being confident of this, I know that I shall remain, that is, I shall continue living and continue with you all. Listen to these words. Why would God want him to continue? For, for their progress and joy of faith. That is for them to continue to grow and experience joy, the joy that comes from faith in Jesus Christ as, a per, as one's personal Savior and Lord. That was his passion, to help people experience the joy of knowing Jesus. And he knew that he, by God granting him life, he could continue serving the Philippians and helping them to grow and experience that joy that comes from knowing Jesus as a personal savior. So I'd like to suggest that Paul's personal outlook on life, when he says, for to me, to live is Christ, means the following. As a Christian, in other words, as one who has accepted Christ as his personal savior, and found the joy of knowing Jesus. As a Christian, life becomes about magnifying Christ, our Savior. 
I believe that's what Paul is saying when he says, for to me, to live is Christ. It is, a, it is saying to me, life is about magnifying Jesus. Does that make sense? That's what Paul's passion was, to magnify Christ. And how was this accomplished? Jesus is magnified, as we read in verse 19 to 26, Jesus is magnified in my life when I help others to experience joy in Jesus. So he, through his, what he wrote, we can see that by him sharing with the Philippians, helping them to find joy in Jesus, Christ would have been magnified. So Jesus is magnified when we help others to experience joy in Jesus, when we help them to know Christ as their personal Savior and Master. That is when, in the eyes of others, Christ is magnified. So how can we apply this in our own lives? I'd like to suggest, suggest two things. How can we apply this? Firstly, if you have not done so already, to, I invite you to experience the joy of knowing and accepting Jesus as your personal Savior and the Lord of your life. Because we read in chapter 3 of Philippians, and that's a whole sermon on its own that I wish to preach on, where, where Paul writes that he counts everything as rubbish or as, as nothing in comparison to the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus. So having experienced meeting Jesus as his Savior, if we experience the joy of knowing Jesus, then we'll be able to do the second step of having experienced that joy in knowing Jesus ourselves. I invite you to make life all about magnifying Jesus, which is done when you help others to experience joy in knowing Jesus. The same joy that you've experienced when you help others to experience that, that is what life is about. That is what it means, I believe, to magnify Jesus. Think of what Ellen White writes in that book, Steps to Christ, just using my own words. When we have come to Jesus, no sooner than having come to him, we will then share with others. We will, we will want to share him with others that they might experience the blessing that we ourselves have experienced. So imagine with me, if we had to apply this, if we had to apply Paul's perspective in life and adopt it as our own, if each one of us is deeply and daily experiencing the joy of knowing Jesus as our personal Savior and Master, if each one of us, out of the abundance of joy in our own hearts, makes our lives all about magnifying Him, by doing whatever we can to help others experience that same joy of knowing Him. If we do that, I see our own lives will be filled with a Christ-centered sense of mission and purpose. I see our families growing in the joy of knowing Christ. I see our churches becoming places of rejoicing in the Lord. Another aspect that comes out strongly in the letter to the Philippians. I see our churches growing as more and more people in our spheres of influence are being introduced to Jesus as their personal Savior and Lord. I see communities being transformed as more and more people and families come to know Jesus. Just imagine if we had to really apply this and live as Paul lived to know Jesus as he knew him and to live for him as he did. So my prayer is that we, along with the Apostle Paul, will also earnestly desire for Christ to always be magnified through us, whether by life or by death. For to us, to live is Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I pray that you would do a special work in each of our lives. Lord, that we can experience 
the deep joy of knowing you as our Savior and Lord. Lord, I know that this is your will for each one of us, and I pray that we'll have a meaningful experience in this way with you. And Lord, I pray that as we experience that joy of knowing you, that we'd also share the blessing with others and help them to experience the same with you. I pray for this blessing and unto your glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.